I'm not a reporter, I'm not a journalist, and I'm not a commentator on politics. I'm a novelist. And for the novelist, if you don't have individuality, you can't write fiction. That's the stuff and the meat and the blood and the bones of fiction. What is middle class Indian society today? That really fascinates me. And to me, if you don't read fiction, you won't even know who you are. You won't know what your own soul looks like. The best way to become a writer is first find a job that has nothing to do with writing that will give you a salary and get you your rosy roti. I will never sell a book or show it to a publisher till I've written it. Hello everyone. Welcome to Just Talking and this is Just Kiran Kapoor and with me is a very very acclaimed award-winning author Anjum Hassan and she's come from Bangalore all the way for the Kusoli Lit Fest. Uh, Anjum, welcome Thank you to so much. Uh, my little show. Thank you Kiran. What a <laughs> delight to be in Kasoli and talking to you. Yes. Thank you. And so you're here for uh, History's Angels, right? Tell us about that book first. Yes, <laughs> I've been mostly talking about my new book. It's still very new. It's just a couple of months old. So I feel a certain uh, excitement mm -hmm. talking about History's Angel. It's a very contemporary novel set in a very contemporary Delhi. But it's about a character who's fascinated by the past. More specifically, Delhi's history, but also Indian history in general. He's a school teacher of history. So the question I'm asking in the novel is what would happen if there was a school teacher of history who was trying to be a little bit adventurous, trying to bring more into the classroom, into the textbook than is possible uh, now, being a little subversive, not wildly rebellious or anything. And uh, just somebody who's like a bit of a daydreamer, a bit of a bookish character, not political in any overt sense. But what happens if you bring those ideas into a school under management that wants to maintain a more rigid idea of Indian history, let's say even a more polarized idea? So that's the very basic premise, but there's a lot more that goes on. There is the story of Alif's family, there are his friends. So it's a whole middle class universe in Delhi, especially in Purani Delhi, because he lives there. And he's very invested in all the landmarks of old Delhi from, you know, the mosque, Jama Masjid, to the little eateries, to this area where he lives in called Tiraha, Bairam Khan. So I wanted to write a novel about a character who's both interested in history and he becomes part of history himself, in a way. No, this is very interesting because up Shillong se hai, and then you moved south. You've also been abroad and uh, worked uh, overseas, right? Or you mm, travelled. Travelled. Yes. I have. I've been mm -hmm. on a fellowship and so on. Yeah, yes. but I really, I'm really based in Bangalore. Delhi is not your city. Delhi is so, and is not my city. And <laughs> second, you know, up you bring about a subject which is history. History mm. is already very exciting and adventurous. Mm. I'm wondering what Alif. Mm. He is a Muslim identity. Mm. So it's is it a reflection or a mm. kind of uh, reaction to current mm. situations in the, the, the that the world is facing or that the country is facing I or a certain section of society is facing? That's how this idea came about? Well, I think as a writer one has to respond to what's happening. But I am very, very sure when I answer that question because I'm asked that question, I'm not a reporter, I'm not a journalist, and I'm not a commentator on politics. These are very important roles increasingly, but I'm none of them. I'm a novelist. So to me, the question always is, how do you bring these questions into fiction? What happens there? And I think they become very interestingly different there. Because Alif doesn't see himself as a victim. He doesn't see himself as somebody who's on the back foot only because he might be Muslim in certain situations where Muslims are not so welcome or he might be a non-practicing Muslim in situations where there are a lot of very more devout Muslims around him. That can also be tricky. So I wanted to take a character who's an individual first, right? Who, of course, happens to find himself at a time when these identities are becoming more hardened. But I wanted to save his individuality. I think that's the first casualty when we talk of people as belonging to a demographic. And for the novelist, if you don't have individuality, you can't write fiction. That's the stuff and the meat and the blood and the bones of fiction, right? So Alif can only be Alif. He can't be any other person. He can't be another history teacher who happens to be Muslim. So, you know, for me, it was exploring 
the question of individuality at a time when our political identities, our religious identities, our ethnic identities are getting more hardened. So Aleph is also Aleph, it comes from the Persian and Urdu Aleph. Bilkul. First number, yes. starting. The alphabet. You know, it's very interesting, okay, I was reading somewhere about your work. You uh, like to bring out a lot of identities in your work mm. and it's middle class, it's mm. the common man, mm. it's layered, and mm. especially women in a brighter, smarter light. Mm. Is it conscious, like as a writer, mm. when did you start writing and realize that this is the universe that mm. needs more action and, you know, not just some fluff mm. fiction novel which is coming from an upper strata of the society yeah. and being lapped up as, you know, yeah. candy kind of thing. Yes. So the, the writer in you is uh, exploring a lot of identities, a lot of other frictions around it. This, how did this uh, writer in you begin? When did you start writing? I think for me, it's really important what I read. Uh, and I think a lot of great fiction from 19th century European fiction to the Russian, the great Russians. All of that is really driven by pictures of what society was in those periods. Right? So the characters are there, but without society, they're just, like you said, floating in some vacuum. Mm -hmm. And their stories might be entertaining, but then you'll forget them the minute you finish reading about them. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm writing about societies also. Even though my characters tend to be quite independent-minded, sometimes they're even loners, they're drifting around, but they are all of that in relation to a society. What is middle-class Indian society today? That really fascinates me. For instance, in Neti Neti, this novel I wrote uh, when I was in my 30s, it's about this young woman who comes to Bangalore and Bangalore is booming. There are all these outsourcing things being set up. There's a lot of new money. There's a new way of living and enjoying yourself. And she feels completely out of place. So I want to explore the alienation of being an Indian at a time of great change. Because I think sometimes we assume that everything happens so easily and it didn't, right? There's a cost for this huge change that we've lived through in the last 20 years. And okay, it's, I'm not saying it's bad or good. I'm just saying that emotionally it is interesting. It is rich material for fiction and that is something we really should explore. When did you start writing? I've been writing since I was a child. I've been one of those scribblers. Um, and my parents were both teachers, so it was a very... Are you from like a middle class, great Indian middle class family? Absolutely. Does that value system come from there? Absolutely. The That's ac very Acute much... observations around you. Yeah. The, I, I come from that and I also come, I think, from a kind of a middle class family. Maybe they, they still exist. Uh, of course, they still exist. But again, everything is different now. Where you were supposed to do well in school and all that, but it wasn't so much pressure to achieve anything, right? So you had a lot of free time to just be yourself, read. It wasn't like you read in order to achieve something. And that's the best way in which to read fiction. And sometimes I see now parents are a little anxious if their children read in fiction because they're like, Ye kya aap, isse kya hoga? it's better you read something that will help you with something. Young people sometimes tell me that, that mm -hmm. you know, their parents say, don't get swayed by fiction. And to me, if you don't read fiction, you won't even know who you are. You won't know what your own soul looks like unless you see it described in a novel, is what I believe. And you, uh, do you also strongly feel that books are increasingly turning into something that's not knowledgeable anymore? It's just a uh, propagandist or some kind of mm. uh, projection of something or just a thing to sell, like a uh, on-the-surface story. Do you think books are meant... They're not doing the job what mm. they are meant for. The writers are not really digging deep. Or we are not reaching out to those kind of writers. Yeah. That's the publishing. Should read, <laughs> you should reach out to more writers who are deeper. No, I think, I think what's happening is that writing is becoming very, very specialized. So you have so much literature about so many things, right? People from so many professions are writing, first of all. Even at this festival, look at this I festival. I think post-COVID, everyone started writing. Writer. Like everyone's when the smartphone writing. came, everyone was a journalist, That's citizen right. journalist. Absolutely. And now now everyone's a writer. Writer, baker, cook. Everything. Exactly. And they're not even only writers, yes. which I find mm. very unnerving because I keep telling people, all I do is write. That's the only thing I can do. And it's 
the only thing I want to do well. And it's it, your profession it's, and identity. Yeah, and I think it takes a lifetime to be able to learn how to do that and I'm still learning. Yes, I agree. So when people say that I wrote this book and now I'm on to something else, and a lot of, again, a, a lot of young people ask me and I tell them that the best way to become a writer is first find a job that has nothing to do with writing that will give you a salary and get you your rosy roti. Yes, and I was coming to that. And then just start writing slowly without the pressure of publishing, without the comparison to what other people are doing. Write what you think you want to write and read a lot and give yourself time. What was your rosy roti? I worked in an NGO for many years and art. actually it was a very interesting place because they were funding arts projects. It was a funder. And you were paid well? To pursue I was passion. paid very, very, a very, very average salary. And then I took a further cut on that because I reduced my working days to three. So I have, I have made that sacrifice in terms of an income because I just wanted the time. How difficult was it to sell your first book mm. to now? Mm. Or is it still a challenge? Because a lot of people are getting Amazon Kindle publishing mm. started, self-publishing. But you know, that. when I speak to publishers... Or when, supposing ABCD lift fest happens. So they say, okay, self-publishing you, you know, they should have gone through the grind. Come mm. through a publisher that's more authentic. Mm. Self-publishers have done it. Mm. It's not authentic. They should also go through that grind. Mm. Publisher should pick. What is that? Or self-publishing is better. What, are, what is your say? And when did you sell? How hard was it to sell your first book? Uh, see, my first novel was published in 2007. That's already 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. There was no Amazon self-publishing then as far as I recall. I don't think. I think no, it it's just come yeah. now after I think Westland Books uh, gave up. Right, and then exactly. In India, the it's just come now, right? Yes, it says maybe two years, three mm. years. And it's picking up yeah. in the younger circles. Not the seasoned writers because probably the publishers already know them. But when you started, how challenging was it to convince a publisher uh, that, okay, this is the book mm. and that it needs well, to be told and yeah. sold? I, I believe that if there's a really good book, and I'm not saying mine was that good, it was a first novel, it was okay. Uh, I'm lucky that it found readers and it found a publisher, but I think if there's a even a decent novel, it will find publishers. In my case, at that point, I was a newbie, but I was also a reviewer. I was writing about books. I had published a book of poetry, so I was not a complete unknown. Okay. And the publisher... Who, that helped. That helped. And the publisher who took up the book, Zuban, I had featured in one of their anthologies. Okay. So, Zuban is a good name. Very yeah, good Yeah. But again, it took time. Mm. You know, I was already in my 30s. I had been writing that novel since my late 20s. So, you know, and I was anxious. I did want to find a publisher, but I was also like, let's see what happens. I didn't want to rush into publishing it myself or anything. So that's the other thing that I emphasize a lot, that let it unwind. I mean, somebody will pick it up. It shouldn't be like you finish it today and you have to find a publisher tomorrow. And of course, many people don't even finish it. They want, they're anxious about publishing even before they've written the book, which to me is completely the wrong way to go. I would never do that. I still don't do that. I will never sell a book or show it to a publisher till I've written it. You've written seven. Once you've written one, you know, people say, Ho gaya, one and done. But seven, to come up with different stories, to uh, be at it. So what advice would you give writers? You know, ek to rosy roti honi chahiye, till you the are a steady income. You of, should have because writing huh. fiction and short stories and poetry will not give you, give you money. There may be in India, in the English language, like half a dozen writers who can live entirely on their writing. So very few, right? Very few. So some do journalism, some do now people write for OTT, whatever. They do other things. Just to write novels and live on that is not easy. No, are you doing that? Just living on novels? No. So oh. I've, I've always had a job. I haven't had a job for the last three years. But that's because I'm on a fellowship for a non-fiction book. So you do assure your income generation from somewhere? Yes, because writing <laughs> fiction is not, not easy. paying enough. But All I, right. st I still want to do it. And after History's Angel, are you... Uh, Thinking about something? Yes, I'm working on a non-fiction book right now. Okay. Which is going to be fiction my first, non first non-fiction non book. And it's going to be on my hometown, Shillong, where I grew up. So All right. Yeah. So, because we don't get much from the East in terms of writing or any kind of engagement. Hmm. So, I this will be something interesting. I hope so. I hope. I'm trying to do it like an oral history. And again, it's, it's stories, but it's real stories. So, it's fact. History fascinates you. 
history totally fascinates me why um because i think it gives us perspective on the present and i also think it is very empowering to actually know how things were because otherwise you are easily misled you know it's just like um it is just like any educated person should be interested in history otherwise you can't call yourself an educated person today somebody was speaking at a panel and said unless you can tell the difference between myth and science you're not an educated person i think the same applies to history mm-hmm. unless you can tell the difference between fable and history you can't call yourself an educated person so we need to have that curiosity yes. in order to be you know to be able to tell what is what is real and what is fantasy and finally you know uh, your identity and your name has it helped you or is it still a challenge or a struggle no my identity and my name has never been never a factor been. in any way i think also because i am i have a muslim name but it's not like i'm interested in the subject particularly i haven't written about muslims or muslim families at all in fact i've written about people who mostly have, i've written about indian i'm more interested in indians than in religion and even the latest book though it is focused on a muslim family this is the first time i'm actually writing in all these years focusing on a family that is muslim and in today's north india at least that can't be just a neutral thing right you're immediately saying something if you're choosing to do that yes so then all the attendant complexities and then you're trying to play with that and you're trying to break that so i think in today's climate i did want to take on that challenge and see where i get but like i said without wanting to be a spokesperson for any one position uh but at the same time trying to talk about a sensitive vulnerable character in that situation and see what happens to him well i hope that character thrives yes I'm you'll have to for, read the book and find will, out we will we will i'm looking forward to more of more works in fiction uh, fiction and non fiction both from thank you so much lovely Kiran. meeting you anjum thanks a lot take care and keep watching just talking